Right, so I know most of my video content is educational and showing you how to manage fisheries uh, in a healthy way. Um, well, this one is a, where I've got it wrong. So, uh, just going down to one of the ponds, I've been to France last week, and uh, I came back to find one of my fish on the bank, clearly an otter kill. Um, so, the investigation began to where it got in. And I'm pretty convinced it's got in under the uh, under the gate um, where I've got a sleeper, but you could see the, the ground had been scratched away. So it looked like that was probably where it was getting in. It wasn't a very big hole, probably you could just about fit your fist through it perhaps. Um, and that was obviously, must have been big enough for the otter to get in. Um, so yeah, this been probably five or six years since I've suffered any otter predation on my ponds. They're all fenced. Um, but yeah, I shall take you down there. I've got some cameras set up for um, to show you some nighttime footage, um, and I'll show you what's been going on. So bear with me. I'll just get down to the pond, and then I'll show you what's been going on. After finding the first carcass, I bought some weld mesh to patch up that weak area of fence that I mentioned, and focused the trail cam on this point. Sure enough, the very next night I had footage of an otter exploring this exact point. Although the mistake I made was setting the trail camera too high up the post opposite where the otter had been exploring, because a few nights later I found another carcass within the fence. How had the otter got in without being caught on camera? Had it climbed over elsewhere? The other corner of the gateway looked like it had been explored, which frustratingly the camera couldn't confirm because the otter may have got underneath the shot of the camera. So if I'd have the camera set up slightly lower on that post, I might have caught and confirmed where it was getting in. But this clip is the closest I could get. It shows the otter in the bottom right, which triggered the camera to restart recording. But right at the start of this clip, the gate's shaking. This may be a sign that the otter had passed underneath the camera to get in and out of the pond. So I bought some more weld mesh and completed securing the whole length of the gateway to eliminate any risk of the otter getting under here again. So tonight could be interesting. You can see up behind me, I've got a trail cam looking at the gate um, and I've got another trail cam inside the fence, which is actually concentrating on the fish. So if an otter gets back in and finds the fish, and it's not on this camera watching the gate, then the otter must have got in over the fence because I can't find any anywhere around this pond where it's dug under successfully. Um, there's lots of areas where it's dug from the inside out and obviously it's got in, not be able to find its way out, panicked and tried to dig under, but if it was climbing the fence successfully and easily, then in my opinion, it wouldn't need to try digging because yeah, it's obviously tried desperately to dig in lots of areas. Um, and maybe it's been forced to, to jump over or climb over, um, but digging has been its first attempt at escaping. So, so yeah, it should be interesting. If this camera doesn't catch anything on the gate, but the camera inside the fence catches uh, otters feeding on that fish, or a otter feeding on that fish inside the gate, finishing it off what it killed last night, then uh, it's evidence that it's not got in the gate. So uh, let's keep an eye on this over the next few days and uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't lose any more. I left the cameras rolling, one film in the gate and the other on the fish carcass, expecting to confirm that the otters were finding another way in, which would confirm that they can climb unless there was evidence of successful tunnelling under the fence. The camera watching the gate picked up nothing other than walkers, foxes and muntjac without a single sighting of an otter again. After a couple of weeks and no otter sightings on the camera, it seemed like they'd moved on, so I placed the cameras in two areas which they'd likely have come from. On the other camera, watching the carcass, it only took a few days for it to be whittled away by kites, buzzards, magpies and rats. So before the carcass completely disappeared, I tossed it over the fence and set the camera to watch it, hopefully confirming that the otters were still in the area, but now unable to get inside the fence after my amendments to the gateway. After a couple of nights, there was just a single sighting of the otter that had picked up on the scent.
Interestingly, the same night, the other camera also picked it up, showing it to be very active and keen to explore the fence, and especially by digging. This highlighted the importance of having a ground skirt around your lakes, or having the fence dug in well into the ground. This otter seemed very persistent in digging his way in, rather than climbing. This only strengthened my belief that otters wouldn't climb over the fence because the two occasions that it got inside the fence and realised that it was trapped, it tried to dig its way out in several areas. If it was a good climber, then surely it wouldn't be so desperate in its attempt to dig out. Instead, wouldn't it just climb? The long periods of inactivity, followed by both cameras picking up lots of footage in one single evening, made me think that these animals work fast and hard, covering lots of ground with their energetic hunting behaviour, searching high and low for a meal, moving in and out of different territories very quickly, in a working spaniel kind of fashion. That eventful night was the last bit of otter footage I'd captured. For weeks, the cameras picked up nothing but the usual countryside wildlife. Week after week, no otters, to the point where I thought I'd stop recording. That was until I got this message. Okay, so after what we learned this morning, after that video of the otter, uh, on the ice, inside the fence, and then it disappearing into the bank. The neighbour said that it's uh, he's not seen it since, and it disappeared into that bank. So, right by the inlet. So uh, tonight, I've got uh, trail cams on each inlet, which they're land drains, so they don't lead anywhere. So the otter could be sat up inside one of those drains. The pipe's big enough for sure. Um, and I saw that murky water come out of the drain after I made a load of disturb disturbance this morning. So uh, potentially the otter is up the land drain. Now there's two that come into this pond, so I'll have a trail camera on each one and uh, see what the, cap the cameras capture tonight. I really felt like I'd solved the mystery of how this otter was getting in. The video sent to me by the neighbours showed the otter disappear into the bank and not coming back out, right by the inlet. I was so confident that I'd capture it coming out of the inlet at night, especially after noticing the water coming out of the land drain cloudy in colour, indicating some disturbance up the pipe. But after a couple of nights with nothing but the duck and rats triggering the camera, I was at a loss as to where the otter had gone and how it had got in and out of the pond. Frustratingly, I was back to the drawing board. Up to this point, I was in denial about an otter's ability to climb a tornado wire fence. Was I being naive? Can they really climb? The whole mystery would make sense if they could, but the two occasions that the otter had got inside the fence, it had made numerous attempts at digging. Why would it do that if it could climb so easily? I scratched my head and did some research into otter behaviour and it didn't take me long to find videos of otters in captivity climbing their vertical mesh enclosure as confidently as they could walk across level ground. Although they're probably much better at this than a wild animal, it suddenly changed my view on how it had potentially got in my fence. The fence spec that I've opted for when I first fenced my ponds was the upside down tornado wire with the hinge at the bottom of the post, using the return as a ground skirt. I've never been keen on the unsightly appearance of a full spec otter fence with brackets and returns on each post. Up until this point I highly doubted the ability of an otter to climb this mesh. 
With my change of mind, I purchased some 100mm offset screw insulators to support a strand of steel wire which I'd fix halfway up each post to put a stop to anything climbing again. One thing I do know about otters is that they hate electricity. Like any other mammal, once they get a kick off an electric fence, they remember it and steer well clear of it. Before I invested in proper tornado wire fencing, I used three low strands of steel which kept the otters out of my ponds for two or three years. However, they do need constant maintenance to prevent the wires from shorting out on grass or weeds. You need a good earth and a reliable energizer and you also need to regularly monitor the health of the battery. Becoming complacent with this maintenance is a steep learning curve which I've learnt very early on in my fish farming journey. The original batch that came to the farm when I was just 18 were only 2 to 4 inch C1 car. Over the next 5 years I'd fed and cropped this batch to become stunning 20 pound fish. Then one morning I had a message from the neighbour to tell me that there was a fish on the grass. Assuming I'd just find a half eaten C2 or C3, I later went to have a look. My heart sank as I approached the pond and instantly recognised the fish. The one that you see pictured here, the biggest and most stunning fish of the lot, eaten alive and discarded half eaten on the bank. I hovered the drone over the pond to have a counter whilst the cold water was crystal clear. These images allowed me to pick out how many of these brood fish I had left to make sure that I wasn't still losing fish without any trace of the fish on the bank. I counted a definite seven fish of that 11 that I had originally introduced as brood fish into this shallow pond. When I got closer, I could see one or two of them clearly had a lucky escape from the otter. I selected these brood fish for size and looks, introducing them to this shallow pond to produce some awesome offspring to rear through the rest of the ponds next year. I really needed to take action before I lose any more of these stunning fish. The insulators arrived so I quickly knocked up a tool that only a blind man would be pleased to see, but it made fixing these insulators to the posts a piece of cake that I could just whip around the pond getting this electric strand electrified quickly and efficiently. One thing I learnt with electric fencing is selecting the right energizer. The longer the fence, the higher the stalled joules that you should use. I've got electric fences over a kilometre in length with three strands of steel. So that's three kilometres of wire that needs an energizer of probably two to three joules to give a robust belt, whereas a 0.2 joules energizer is, is plenty for a small single strand like this small pond. A voltmeter is a cheap and essential tool that will give you peace of mind that the fence is working. Aiming for a reading of around 3000 volts is what I try and aim for. I've also learned that although it looks smart to have a high tensile wire, it's not essential. In fact, lower tension is probably better because you'll get more contact time and a bigger contact area when something touches the wire. If the wire has less tension, it can wrap around the point of contact better than a high tensile strand, therefore more likely to get a good zap. Okay, so just got the uh, electric strand up around the pond, um, halfway at the post. So any otters now that try and climb, if they're climbing, got no evidence to support that. Um, but they're getting in somehow, so that's going to rule that out. So um, I've just put yeah that electric strand halfway at the post all the way round, um, and that's going to eliminate the risk of that happening. So uh, I've not had any otter kills now for well since that last one, which is a few months ago now. Um, there's not a lot of winter left. Obviously, otters are more of an issue through the winter when. Uh, when the streams are more coloured and the rivers are more, hold a, a, a stronger current, harder for them to find their fish, harder for them to catch the fish in that, those sort of, uh, in that sort of situation. Um, so they come inland into water, still waters, which are much clearer in the winter because there's no algal blooms, there's less of uh, the fish are less active, so there's um, less disturbance in the water, much easier for them to find and locate the fish, and obviously the fish are much more uh, dormant and uh, less active, so easier for them to catch and uh, obviously you always pick the bigger fish because they're slower, easier to grab hold of 
like if I asked you to go in and get a, a two pound carp from one of these ponds by hand, it's a lot harder than it is to find one big 30 or 40 pound carp in a little pond. So uh, yeah, that's where we get more issues in the winter and why we lose bigger fish rather than a smaller average with otters. Um, and anywhere that's, even if you've got a fence, you're not safe. You still need to keep a, keep a good eye on it. They're very good when they're working properly, but you do need to keep an eye on them like I've learned. I've learned the hard way and I think it's taken me losing those fish to actually do anything because I wouldn't have done anything. I would have just left the ponds as they were because they were keeping the otters out. The otters haven't got in since I put the fences up, so I thought it was all hunky-dory. And I'd have never have done anything. Um, I'd have left it as, it as it was. So it took me losing those fish to think, ah, right, okay, um, need to stop that. So uh, stamp that out a bit quick and put that electric strand up and obviously learnt a lot with the cameras and stuff. But yeah, like I say, um, don't get complacent with your fences. If you haven't got a fence and you've not got otters in your area, honestly, it's just a matter of time, I promise you. In the years to come, they're just the numbers that you go in, they're just on the trend that they're going, they're just going to be everywhere. Um, and if you haven't got a fence, it's just on borrowed time, and you're very lucky you haven't got any uh, otters in, the, in your area at the moment. But honestly, I think it's just a matter of time before they're distributed across the UK, like in my own example. Um, all the years I've worked in fisheries, up until about two years ago, I'd never seen an otter. In the last couple of years, I've countless, probably 20 plus. So. Uh, if that's anything to go by, then yeah, the future years are looking pretty bleak for us as still water owners, but we're very lucky in the, in the way that we can, uh, we can actually fence still waters um, and isolate them away from otters and keep them out. But uh, you've got to feel sorry for those river anglers and uh, river fishing is pretty much, uh, you can't protect that. So yeah, you feel sorry for those river anglers and river fisheries that that is going to be um, one of the angling disciplines that does really suffer from the uh, success of otter populations. So yeah, hopefully this video has helped to sort of, help to give an idea of the issue of otters and how they behave. And uh, to be honest, I'm a bit more, I'm a bit gutted it's not conclusive. We haven't found conclusive evidence that the otter can climb an otter fence. I guess the conclusion of this video would be, can otters climb a fence? Potentially, but not definitely, which is a pretty rubbish outcome. But uh, I'm sure we've learned a lot from the footage that I've captured and I've certainly learned a lot through videoing them and analysing what they've done to my ponds. And uh, I'll definitely be uh, putting electric around all my fences now and securing all the gateways because yeah, they're here, they're only going to get multiplied now, they're only going to get worse, they're only going to get more and more. So yeah, it's time to act now. Um, and yeah, like and share the video if it helps you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel channel and following our social media pages more edit I've got after I finished editing this video I'm straight on to another one um, so yeah there's lots more to come and uh, good luck keeping those otters out